All right, welcome back, everybody, and we're going to do a little review on this plant right here. And um, this plant is called the Ultra Coli. It's basically an orange version of the sunberry that I grow, which is right here. But the sunberries, as you can see here, these grow a little bit differently, and they're black, and they're just kind of a different pattern to them. But this is basically in the same family. It is a different plant, however, it's not quite the same thing. This is falling more into the ground cherry type thing, but it's not a husk type vegetable or fruit or a husk tomato. It's not, uh, it, the plant foliage is, is a very soft and fuzzy type of foliage, but it's not quite a husk, husk type plant. Like for example, right here, this is called the Aunt Molly's ground cherry. And you can see that it makes these types of uh, lantern uh, things. But the leaf pattern is what I'm showing you. It's a very soft leaf pattern. The stem is velvety. And so this plant is more like what I just showed you rather than like the sunberry. The sunberry is more of a, like almost like a pepper plant. It's very smooth. Um, it, there's no hair on it. It grows very, almost like a pepper plant, but with, with, with these little berries on it. This, however, it doesn't quite grow like that. It grows more like the um, the Aunt Molly's, uh, you know, ground cherry. So just want to make sure you understand what this plant's like. Now, I had a little trouble growing this for several years now. I finally got a plant to do pretty good. But it, this plant's kind of funny. I had this plant potted. I had it in, I had it in the premium locations in my greenhouse because I want to get seed from it and I want to grow it and... Uh, so I grew it, I was growing it in premium locations in my greenhouse. This thing had priority as far as real estate went. It does not, it did not like the sun. So when I put this thing in full sun, even when I watered it, did it, it still wilted. It, it was really, did not like to be in direct sun. As soon as I found a spot like over here, where it's kind of canopy, it's getting indirect sun from here. You can see all the plants are growing over the top of it. Then this thing started to bump and do really good. So it's a very slow growing plant. It generally doesn't want to get very big. If it does, if it is going to get big, it's not going to do it very easily. It's you're going to have to, you're going to have to kind of coerce this plant a little bit to, to kind of grow. You're going to have to find out how and where it's going to grow best in your property. I find this plant grows best on say, um, like if this was a forest over here, this plant would grow best on the edge of a forest. And let's say this was an open field or a low brush. This plant will grow good between the high brush and the low brush at that at that point right there. That's where this plant likes to be. It doesn't like to be in direct sun or anything like that. Now, is that in every single case? I don't know. I'll try growing it again next year. If it does the same thing, I'm the, the only way to grow it is in, in this type of environment. This is the only place I, I actually really ever did any good with this plant. Everywhere else I tried to grow it, it just did not like to grow in there. It just didn't like it. So anyway, I just want to make sure I'm clear on that. So if you're buying seeds for this, you, you kind of understand what you're getting into. It's not an easy plant to grow. The fruits take a very long time to ripen. Um, I was going to cut this whole bract off, but there's still green ones on there. So I guess we're not going to do that. Here, here's one. Here's one here with, with a full thing. So we could cut this one off. So I don't want to take anything off of here until, um, you know, until I can see they're all ripened. This is the only one that's ripened down here. All the rest of these don't seem to be ripened. So, let's pick off some of those dead leaves. You know, you can see like over here. That's what they look like. Uh, we'll, we'll cut this one bracked off right here. And they seem like they're on there pretty firmly, but I need to get I need to save every one of these berries so I can get seeds off it. In fact, I might even bring this thing in for the winter and let it continue to make berries indoors because this plant is really hard to get to this stage with the berries, believe it or not. It's not easy. I had a hard time for several, I'd say more than several years, I'd say like three or four years I've been growing this and I've had a hard time every year. Most of the times it stunts or it dies and I get a couple berries off it and I just, I, I got really lucky with this plant too because I was, I was completely out of seed for this and I was down to my last seed and I happened to get this one to take and it took a long time to go from a little tiny sprout just to big enough to where I could eventually repot it after like a month and a half. It didn't look like it was gonna make it. It looked like it was gonna die off. And then finally, it started to grow a little longer and then I finally started, was able to repot it and then here we are now. 
So it, it's, it's a tough one to grow. It's not, it doesn't grow as easy and as prevalent as the Sunberry or Wonderberry. All right, so let's take a closer look at this. I'm going to put my glasses on for this so I can see what you see. And so this is what it looks like. So you get one bract, and you can see how it comes up. And there will be a bunch of berries on it like this. And you can see how they're translucent. Try to, I'll try to show you this in such a way so you can see this good. I want you to see this. You can see... If you look really close, you can actually see the seeds on the inside of the berry. Can you see the seeds on the inside of the berry? Just to give you an idea. It's translucent, basically. I'm not sure how well this is getting picked up by the camera. You see those seeds? All right, and that's what it looks like on the top. And this is the full bract. This is basically all you're going to see off of each bract. You'll get one long string, stringer like this, and you get about six berries. I think I seen one or two on there with eight berries on it. In general, that's about it. They don't get much more than six berries, maybe five. That's it. Here's one here that you might be two, four, six. That's it. You know, maybe six berries is the max. But in general, with these type of plants, this isn't a nightshade family. So in general, with these plants, I normally wouldn't eat even these until I see, see how that... Okay, you see how that calyx has turned a color? That's when I usually eat the berries. The rest of these calyxes, you see how they're still green? I still wouldn't eat these berries until those calyxes turn to a, a lighter color like that. And in most cases, you really want to wait until these berries fall on the ground. Again, this is you're getting into the nightshade types of fruits, so you want to be a little on the careful side when you're eating these. The best way to eat these is wait till they fall on the ground. That's when you know they're at their full ripeness and all the alkaloids will be transitioned over. So I usually wait for my berries to, on this particular variety or most other nightshades that I eat uh, to get that calyx has got to get kind of uh, off colored like that and the stems and then that berry's pretty much uh, you're safe to eat. So the other ones are safe to eat too. It's just they still may have some alkaloids in them that you, you want to wait until they kind of, you know, transition over. So let's turn you around and then uh, let's give it a taste test. All right, here we are. We're going to do another review. I won't miss a pod review. This is not a pod review. This is something different. So we're here. We're going to do a taste test now on the Ultra Coli. And uh, here it is. Try to show it to you. Like that. I'm not sure where it's coming in clear. I don't have my glasses on and everything looks blurry, so I'm not sure what you could see. But you, you could see in the earlier images of what it looks like. Maybe I'll throw an image up here and there. So anyway, that's it. And let's give that a taste test and try to describe this flavor. Okay, so it pretty much tastes like a sunberry. Except this thing has a little bit of a tanginess to it. Whereas the sunberries generally don't have any tanginess. Uh, the, the sunberries are pretty much, uh, pretty, they're pretty sweet. They don't taste anything, uh, you don't taste any tanginess in it. This one, you, you taste a little bit of tanginess with it. It's not bad, but um, it's not as sweet as the sunberry per se. I mean, um, it's, but it's pretty much tastes the same as a sunberry. There's no other way. If you don't know what a sunberry tastes like, it's kind of going to be kind of hard to explain that. Uh, you're probably asking, well, what's a sunberry? Well, let's pick, let's pick one for you. So, this one ain't ripe. It's ripe to you, but I can see it from here. It's still got green in it. That really ain't... It's not going to taste right. It's still hard, too. Let me try to see if I could pick one that's black. Yeah, none of these are really ripe yet. See, those are all sunberries. I usually pick all of them. Here's one. This one should be ripe. I'll give you an idea what this tastes like. I'll try anyway. And Because uh, they taste the same as that. That's exactly what it is. Except this had a tanginess to it in the aftertaste. Yeah, now the Sunberry, when you eat them, they're very sweet. But it's not a sweetness like a um, uh, a sugar type of sweetness. This is like a very 
s concentrated, more concentrated form of a fructose type of sweetness. It doesn't taste like sugar. Um, the the Sunberry is kind of the same way. It's just not as intense. The, I mean, the um, Ultra Coli. Uh, it's it tastes kind of the same way, but it's just not as as intense. So, I mean, if you ask me, I think it's a good berry. It's just I grow it more for the fact that people might want to buy seed for it. But if I was to choose between the Sunberry and the uh, Ultra Coli. I would probably go with the Sunberry because the Sunberry, as you can see, I know this reviews about the Ultra Coli, but just trying to compare the two because they're very close to being almost the same thing, except this one's orange. You can see that Sunberry plant right there. There are literally going to be hundreds upon hundreds of berries that come off of this thing. I'm, I may not even be able to capture all these berries because they all ripen at different points. And then when they start falling on the ground, hundreds upon hundreds of more come up. I mean, you could fill up five gallon pails and it self seeds and you can make a wine with it you can make preserves with it and this particular plant i don't think you're going to be able to do that with it's just not really um that kind of plant though it's fun to grow i will say that and if you're somebody who likes to grow solanums and uh, you really want to reach out a little bit to different solanum varieties uh this would be a good one to grow it's it's fun to grow you give it a grow for one year if you don't like it and at least you tried it you know but um, there's, I, I mean, I, can, I can't really like, you know, recommend it like I would recommend a Sunberry. If a, sunberries I recommend simply because of the, the amount of berries it put out and, and the, uh, you could eat these things all day. This thing's not going to be like that. This is more of an, maybe an ornamental type thing. And, uh, it's just interesting to grow. It's something different as opposed to what we normally grow. Sunberries, garden huckleberries, that kind of a thing. There's a little bit different, so... Yeah, it's something you can add to your, your grow list for the following season. I figured I'd share that. I should get enough uh, fruits off of this thing this year where I can offer some seed to it. And uh, maybe I'll grow it again next year just so I can uh, maybe revisit it. So anyway, that's just a quick video on the Ultra Coli. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.